Run it back nation. What is good? Sixers, sickos. What is good? It is I, DJ So Give me a million likes on this video, okay? One million right now. Hit the like button. Give me a million. Today, uh, I have a video from a physician who made a YouTube video talking about the Joel Embiid injury and giving his professional opinion using the clip of the actual injury happening and other things like that. I want to live react to the video because I haven't watched it, so I just want to watch the video and live react without watching it first. I think that'll be cool. And somebody, uh, a physician who lives in Miami, who's a fan of the show, emailed me with his opinion on it. So shout out to this guy, retired podiatrist, uh, who was a Dr. J fan growing up, he emailed me and he said, good morning, Mr. Eastwood. MRI technology is somewhat overrated. While it is oftentimes the best non-invasive imaging option for soft tissues, the technology still suffers from relatively poor resolution and discrimination. In contrast, CT tech is many leagues ahead on those two points, but CT is not always the best fit for soft tissue imaging. He's reacting to me making that video where I'm entirely confused as to why doctors or whoever does not have answers yet on Joel Embiid's knee. And uh, he's being very polite and not calling me an idiot, but I... <laughs> a group of doctors would probably see that video and be like, this guy's an idiot. Thank you for not calling me an idiot. I have not followed the Embiid case closely, but I wouldn't be surprised if the medical personnel involved in genuinely cannot make a complete diagnosis at this point just on the MRI. The gold standard for evaluating the internals of the knee joint is obviously checking the thing out with an endoscope and camera. As you probably know, scoping a knee joint is relatively simple. I don't know that. I don't know anything at all. I'm the dumbest person alive. Uh, as you probably know, scoping a knee joint is relatively simple and doesn't involve too much downtime on part of the patient. If they feel the need to go there, they will wait a short time until inflammation from the current injury settles down a bit prior to attempting a scope. That makes perfect sense. So if they if they looked at the MRI and they can't get a clear picture, they have to wait for the swelling to go down to endoscope the knee and really find out what's going on. So thank you for that. I'm stupid. Uh, hopefully we find out what the injury actually is very soon. Now we have Brian Sutter MD on YouTube. I'm going to put the link in the description if you want to just watch his video without me talking over it or just go in the comments and be like, play the video and shut up like you always do. Um, he made a video last year during the playoffs on Joel Embiid's injury. He's making a video now on Joel Embiid's injury. You might as well just make a video every year because he's hurt every year. Uh, but let's listen to it and... Uh, See what happens. Joel Embiid has a torn lateral meniscus, leading to, of course, a lot of concern and confusion about what's going to happen with the 76er star. And we're going to try and simplify it. And exp I find it interesting that he says torn. You know, Shams said torn. Woes changed it to, to injured. Shams deleted the tweet. This guy at MD, he's running with torn for some reason. Explain it in better detail here in this video. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and my goal on this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. Here's the tweet from Woj saying that Embiid has been diagnosed with an injured lateral meniscus in his left knee, will be out through the weekend while a treatment plan is finalized, and then further went on to clarify that there's a lot of uncertainty about how the medical staff, outside specialists, and Embiid are going to move forward with what they do. This is all really, really important as we'll talk about with some of the minutia with how we handle and manage meniscus tears. But first I wanna go back to start everything with this play because minutia. everybody's getting- Minutia, good word. A little bit caught up in, is his meniscus injured? Did he tear it? Was this the moment when the tear occurred? And I think that's really important. It sounds like we're splitting hairs, but that's extremely important to think about when the tear occurred in terms of how we manage it and how we consider this. So this of course was the play when Embiid eventually had to come out of the game. And again, I don't think that this is when the tear occurred. I don't think if you go 30 minutes before this. I said that! I said that! I said it was already torn because he couldn't jump and he was trying to block a shot. And Nick Nurse tried to tell me this injury is different from the one that he had before. Me and the doctor are right. I'm a fucking doctor. I'm a doctor, bro. Sign me up. I was right. This play that he had a completely normal meniscus and then boom, on this play, the meniscus tore. Number one, Tell there's doc. no axial load going up through his foot. He's not loading it. He's not bending and twisting. All that's happening is somebody is landing on his knee and it's hyperextending it. But again, we talked about how this isn't really hyperextending. It's just getting him back to a more neutral position. 
where yes, depending on his range of motion, this might be more than the soft tissue on the back of the knee can handle, but this shouldn't like extend the joint enough to cause significant bone bruising or a new injury. So no, I do not think that this play injured Embiid's meniscus. Now this play could have certainly aggravated a meniscus. And in fact, one of the physical exam tests that we'll do for a meniscus tear is something called a bounce home test, where you take the knee, you initially have it in some flexion with it bent, and then you sort of slowly go into extension and you're trying to take, if you imagine the joint, you're trying to take the more front anterior portion of the meniscus and sort of knock it together to just see if you can irritate any potential tear whenever you go from neutral to a little bit extended. So in a way, what's happening here on Embiid is sort of like a, a bounce home test to potentially irritate the meniscus. So this very much could have irritated an already torn meniscus. <laughs> I don't think this caused a new meniscus tear to occur. Take and that, explain Nick. explain again, I promise in detail, why all that matters. Next, we're gonna take a look at the meniscus anatomy, how we treat these, this distinction between old versus new. Lesson here, of course, we're looking at a left knee. The menisci are going to be these two C-shaped pieces of cartilage that sit inside the knee. There's one on the outside, the lateral meniscus, and then one on the inside, the medial meniscus. If we hide some more of these structures here so that we can ultimately look kind of from top down at these tissues, we'll get a better look at what these exactly look like. So here we have those two menisci. If we zoom in here, this is the one lateral on the outside, and then we have the medial on the inside. The meniscus get their blood supply from out to in, and so the blood supply starts at the periphery and then works its way inward on both sides. This is important because whenever we talk about the ability to repair versus resect a meniscus in surgery, a lot of it depends on the blood supply to the torn area. So if you have a tear that's say down here in a poorly vascularized area, it might not be as amenable to a repair because there's not gonna be as much healing potential versus having a tear out on the periphery with much better blood supply. There's more ability for that tear to heal. In general, the two things that they're probably considering with Embiid are, do we need to do a surgery now or do we not need to do a surgery now? The fact that they're taking time to think about this means that it is not some big, major, severe, displaced meniscus tear. Some meniscus tears, when you see it on the MRI, are clearly so torn that you know you need to do a surgery. And you know you need to do a surgery because you won't be able to adequately treat it later on. That doesn't seem to be the case with Embiid because we would have probably found that out. You, you wouldn't need to go to multiple specialists to make that determination. What they're probably trying to decide is how do we manage this in terms of, do we need to do a surgery now? Can we give him some time? Can we let him try to play through this? How is that going to affect things long-term? So the fact that they're taking time to decide is I think a good thing. Now. Meniscus tears. We've got to talk about this because it's really important, especially in a high level athlete. MB number one has already had surgery on the meniscus in the left knee. I don't know if we know if it was the lateral or the medial, but anytime you do surgery. I don't remember him having surgery on it. I thought he just played through it and that was it. I don't know. You're going to remove part of that meniscus, potentially in his case. And so what that does is it affects the rest of the meniscus and can put you more at risk of having future problems with that tissue. If you take a large population of NBA players and you get MRIs on their knees, especially bigger guys like Embiid who have had previous surgery, you're going to find torn meniscus tissue in a high percentage of them. That doesn't mean that it's symptomatic. And so the challenge with Embiid is they I see meniscus tear on the MRI. Does it mean it's actually symptomatic? And so they'll base their physical exam. They'll correlate where he hurts with what they see on the MRI to make that determination. But it is very possible. In fact, I'd say it's probable that that meniscus tear has been in Embiid's knee for a while, whether or not it was causing any symptoms. It's not like they mismanaged it because again, a lot of basketball players and professional athletes are going to have abnormal tissue in their cartilage and their meniscus where you could find something to call out as not being 100% normal. That's what we said last year when they said partial meniscus tear and people were saying, uh, doctors were saying, you can have a partial meniscus tear. A, lot, a normal person walking down the street could get an MRI and have a partial meniscus tear without knowing and without having any pain. So that's interesting. But remember with meniscus tears, especially there is so much variation in tear pattern and tear severity. You can have just a slight little area of fraying. You might have this big flap, unstable bucket handle tear. You could have a complete root avulsion. There is so much variety in meniscus tears. This is why orthopedic surgeons get paid the big bucks because you've got to be able to decide what's a true new symptomatic tear. What's sort of expected activity related result of previous surgery injuries. And so in Embiid, I suspect this tear has been there for a while. 
Whether or not it was symptomatic before and became symptomatic recently, I would say most likely. But it's not like there was a big tear that the Sixers medical staff missed that just now they're appreciating. This is a very, very expected, very normal sequence of events that's part of being a high-level athlete. You have these aches and pains, you have these abnormal findings, the medical staff just has to understand how to appropriately address them. If they decide on surgery, we're looking at either a meniscectomy, which is resection of the torn tissue, or a repair. A repair would put him beat out for the rest of the season. A meniscectomy would allow him to come back in probably somewhere around four to six weeks, best case scenario. The other possibility is if there's a tear, you can potentially try and play through it, and then you address it at the end of the season. The challenge with that is if it's a tear that could currently be repaired, ideally you want to repair the meniscus for the long-term health of the athlete. If you continue to play through it, you could make that tear worse to where then you can't repair it after the season and you're doing sort of an inferior surgery long-term by just cutting out the torn tissue. So there are a lot of factors at play here, but not anything that necessarily is number one shocking or like an, oh no, this is terrible moment. It doesn't surprise me at all that they found a meniscus tear on his MRI, like I said in my initial video, but there's just so many variables in terms of how big, is it old, is it new? Can it be repaired? Does it need to be repaired? That go into play here that I don't think Sixers fans should be all doom and gloom just yet. It's very possible they say, look, we're just going to rest him for a couple weeks, do an injection, let him try and play through the season. Or they might say, you know what, he's going to miss a month. We're going to go in there and treat it right now. And all we can do is cut it out. Yes, there's a very real. Let me know in the comments what you think. I know I'm not, we're not, none of us are professionals. Well, some of you are like the guy that emailed me. If you're a doctor watching this, you know, uh, but let me know what you think in the comments because Joel's tried to play through a meniscus tear before and it didn't look great because the amount of pain that he was in just trying to jump in that playoff series where he had that partially torn meniscus. Uh, let me know what you think. Do you think they should do the surgery and hit, sit him out a month and have him come back and, and you know, be 100%? That's what, that's what I'm going for. I don't care if you sit him to the end of the season, you know? I hope Daryl Morey does something at the trade deadline uh, give him bead the surgery, let him come back a hundred percent. The surgery leaves him out a month or a month and a half. And we're back in business right before the playoffs. If Joel's healthy in the playoffs I say, I say it all the time. I'll say it a million times again. The Sixers are contenders. If Joel Embiid is a hundred percent, if you get that 35 point per game, MVP dominant scorer and rim protector in the playoffs, the 76ers are contenders. If he's not 100%, they are not contenders. So I don't care about playoff seeding or whatever. If the Sixers can stay afloat, again, I looked at the standings the other day. Uh, the seventh seed is five games behind the Pacers, so I don't think the Sixers could fall to seven. I think they can fall to six. Um, something bad, bad, bad would have to happen to fall to seven, although the schedule isn't as easy as it was at the beginning of the year. I don't know. I'm going with get the surgery and come back 100%. That's what I'm going with. Let me know what you're going with. Shout out to Brian Sutter, MD, again, a second year in a row of me reacting to this guy's video talking about Joel Embiid's knee injury because this is just yearly occurrence. Uh, I'll put the link to the full video down below. And uh, yeah, give me all your thoughts. Anything else you want to talk about, hit me up in the comments. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, wherever. I'm right here. Y'all have a good one.